Welcome guys, Nip Speed Heat video. This is a, a tutorial fix. I've done one of these before about the CPU, but it was a bit of a rush video and I still get a lot of questions, so I figured I'd do it again, especially with the new build that I'm running on. So, as you can see here, I'm firing up a completely fresh installation of the game. There's no tweaks, there's nothing. Um, running at 1440, which is 2K, 120 frame. Uh, maxed out graphics. It is running off an SSD, which is on SATA, so it's not an M.2 or anything. As you can see, I've got the on-screen display up, um, running a 480FE, so the, the hardware has increased now, but as you can see, it's still very shaky, and the CPU, even though it's uh, i7 13700K, uh, eight performance cores, and the rest are all the eco-friendly whatever cores, um, it's still using it massively heavy. This game is so CPU-based, it's ridiculous, doesn't need to be. Um, but when EA like to mess about and don't do things properly, that's what you get. Um, so yeah, settings. So as I say, it's running on a 4080 FE. I've got everything cranked to max, as high as it can be. V-Sync is on as well. Uh, motion blur is off because it's just not needed in this game. Um, I'm still on the fence about this game. I still can't get on with it. I, f I think the EA franchise has just been soiled. And that's why I don't even have it Unbound. I've not done any content for Unbound. Don't have it. I won't install it. I don't like the look of it. It looks nice, but I don't like all the graffiti stuff that's on it. But anyway, so that's the setting side of the video. We're going to jump into the gameplay. Um, it takes a little bit to load up first time, but hey, it is what it is. As you can see, the CPU is still getting pretty heavily hit. Um, and we're in like the, the mid-60C, going up to 70. When we get in the game, you're going to see it hit the 70s. Which is just crazy, this CPU runs hot anyway, um, and so I've got a big ass hydro cooler on it, but phew, this game likes to challenge it. So I'm going to let you watch a bit of gameplay, it's up to you if you want to skip forward, um, but basically the gameplay is just showing how the, the computer handles uh, the game, basically, if I can put that in layman's terms. Um, it's just going to show you what the graphics card's doing, temp-wise, uh, the speed is running out, which is up in the 2000s. Weirdly enough, I can't cap. Like, I don't hit the limit of the graphics card running this game. You'd think, with it absolutely maxed out, it would be, like, the clock would be 2700 megahertz, but it's not. It's just, yeah, it's dancing all over the place, which is a bit strange. Um, which is, again, leads to this whole CPU-based kind of game. It's just so, why did EA do it? Anyway, I'm gonna let you watch this gameplay before I start ranting. And I'll jump back on and talk you through the file side of it at the end of this little clip. Okay, so we're back on the desktop. Just open up my backup file with my user CFG file. Um, I'm gonna open it up in Notepad. You can actually create this yourself. It's really easy to do. Just copy the details. I'll put it in the description below. Um, it's on the old video as well. Just go to start bar, type in note, and you'll get Notepad. It's that simple. So when you copy it across, make sure you put in the little speech bracket thing, majiggy, I've forgotten the name of that, but yeah, the two little dot thing. Um, and copy and paste. Make sure there's no spaces behind all the numbers as well. Um, literally as is. So we want to save it, save as. Um, literally, just at the end of the file name, just put in .cfg. 
um, click save. You can also change the, to the document type as well if you want to just confirm that it does go through. But So save it with a .cfg. But when you go back to your actual game folder, installation folder, you should see the user cfg when you save it yourself. Um, I'm going to load up the game now. If you can't see the extensions, the CFG or the .exe or the .ll, um, go into your folder options and locate file extensions. It will be under file extensions. So as you load up the game now, um, you're going to see a drastic difference with the on-screen display when it comes up eventually. There we go. It's not using all the cores. I found through loading, it's still very you see that the CPU counts. The CPU count itself drops. The clock is still the same, but the temperatures drop drastically, which is the main thing. Because you're not, you're physically telling the game, do not use as many cores. Just use what I'm telling you to use. And that's because it's telling the, the game to not use as many cores. It's restricting how much it can physically use the CPU, um, so which is in turn going to drop the temperatures. It's that simple. Um, you got to think all these people are setting up like with a console and it's being absolutely hammered by the game um, because these publishers don't care about your console they don't care what's going on that's not their problem if the console burns out they're just going to say it's dusty or you didn't keep it in a cool place or whatever but for them they can just crank it to the max send it to the moon um, and hope that the game runs smooth <laughs> Bobby's Gamera. Um, so gameplay now, you can see that even though we set it to four cores, it's still, because I've got so many, it's still utilizing some other cores. Um, obviously I'm screen capturing as well so a few of those little cores are going to be used for the screen cap software but as a whole it's running four cores and they're kind of like mid 50% usage uh, temperatures are mid 50s or a bit high 40s so we've seen like a good 10 to 20 10 15 20 uh, degree drop in temperature which is great it's flowing a lot smoother the GPU is being used a bit more, but it's still not at the high clocks, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm going to let you just watch through this gameplay. This is just showing, like, you know, I'm trying to thrash the game around, load different things, and cause as much particles, and get, uh, get the speed up in the car, and just, just push the game in different ways that a normal player would. So I'm going to jump back on at the end of this clip. So back to the desktop. So if you're like me and you've got a high performance CPU, the i7-13700K is 16 physical cores and it's a total of 24. So it's eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores, total of 16 cores. Then you can up these figures a little bit. And as I put in, you've got eight and 16, eight performance. So that's what we're gonna put in the Fred process account and the max process account. We're just gonna change those three digits. So eight, eight, and then change the four and eight, make sure there's no space leave the rest as it is. And we're going to save that file. You can save it on exit, it's not a problem because it's just going to keep saving it as the same file type and we'll load up the game again. So I have tried it with three people that are still running tri CPUs, um, tri cores and what have you. It doesn't like three. It doesn't seem to like anything below four. 
which is a bit strange. But if you're running a six core CPU, just put it as four. If you're running eight, keep it as four. Um, I wouldn't, if you're running eight, I wouldn't put it as six. It, it was a bit unstable, but anything above eight is pointless. I think eight is really the limit of where you need to go for this game. There's no point putting it any higher, like 10, 12, 14, 16, or whatever. Don't put it as odds. Don't do five, seven, nine. It just, it gets weird. Um, but as you can see, firing up the game, cores are settling themselves down, clocks are still the same, temperatures in the mid 50s, GPU is G being the GPU doing its thing. So let's get into the gameplay and you'll see quite an interesting change. Bobby's Okay, so we're back in a core CPU usage is a little bit higher. I found it went up by about 10%. Um, seems to be a lot happier with eight cores. And the, the kind of like cooling side of it, it's hard to see what's, what's really going on with this. So when we ran it on four cores, the CPU usage was lower and the cooling, like the temperature was lower. When we put it to eight cores, the CPU usage has gone up a little bit. Um, which also is going to increase the temperatures, but it kind of increases by a good 10 degrees. So I'd really say probably four core is better, but the game seems to be smoother on eight. Obviously I'm doing a lot of recording as well, screen capture, so that's going to come into play of how much the CPU is being used. But overall, so I just want to also point out guys, I've seen a lot of comments about the 4000 series uh, graphics cards not being as good as hyped up to be. And this is purely because they are so super, they are so CPU based. Um, they are so, and this is purely because their performance is based off CPU. If you've got an old CPU or an old generation CPU and motherboard, they're not gonna work as well. And that's common logic, but also it has been more evident with, but it's become more evident with the 4000 series. I ran it on, what was a good, I ran it in my old system, which is a decent eight core CPU, 3.2 or 3.4 gigahertz, um, DDR3 memory in the board, and it was a PCI Express 16 version three, and the card was bottlenecked. Not just because of the PCI Express bus version, but also because of the CPU, and I learned that firsthand. Building this new system, yes, the motherboard is obviously brand spanking new, it's a PCI Express version, Five or Gen 5. Um, the graphics card is only Gen 4, but also the architecture to the CPU and what the CPU can do as a whole for the system. I'm making it sound a bit stupid. Um, I'm not getting all technical with it, but bottom line is Intel have kind of messed up their, their CPU line of like how they name them and stuff. So it's very difficult to say these CPUs will benefit the 4000 cards. But the, like the 13 Gen, like the 13th gen, which is what I've got, it just opens up the GPU so much more. Um, with the architecture of the motherboard and the CPU together, it's just, it's amazing to see the 480 FE just from the old system to this new system just burst out of life. It's like a whole new graphics card and it's goddamn good. Um, and it makes this game what used to be difficult to play graphically wise on the old system now just seem like it's an old game of Sonic. It's nothing. The computer's not even bothered by it, which is pretty cool. Um, but that said, doesn't mean I'm going to get the new... That said, doesn't mean I'm going to really play it. I'm not going to do any future content on it. Um, this video is purely just to help those that are having issues with it. I want to play the game. I'm not going to get any speed unbound to play it. Um, I'm not going to pay for it and play it. Um, they used to... EA used to do this like free weekend thing where you could play the game stuff and if that ever comes along then I might download it and try it and try the file stuff on it um, but they seem to hide that behind the EA Play BS stuff they've got now so as far as I'm concerned I'm not going to bother I'm not going to be interested in it um, but that's it guys I'm going to end the video here thanks for watching this little tutorial I hope it helped if it did help give it a like um, if you do share it out just remember to give me a little shout about it and a little shout for it 
Uh, that said, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps. Try it out.